Christmas is almost here. Wow. And again, as usual, the age-old debate resurrects. Should Seventh-day Adventist Christians and all other Christians, as a matter of fact, celebrate Christmas? Well, today, I am going to reveal to you five secrets about Christmas from Ellen G. White. So for those of you who do not know, Ellen G. White is one of the most popular Christian authors in the world. In fact, you can Google her right now. She received several visions from God and wrote many powerful books, including the most powerful devotional book entitled The Desire of Ages and the famous Great Controversy books. In fact, she wrote many books. I cannot even have time to talk to you about all of them. So just Google Ellen G. White and you discover a lot of the books that she wrote. Now, this woman lived somewhere in the 1800s, but it would interest you to note that she shared some of the most powerful truths about Christmas, truth that every Christian, irrespective of your denominational background, and by the way, this message is not for Seventh-day Adventists. This message is for every Christian. And so I'm going to share some of the truths and secrets that she, she shared with, with us on Christmas, and you will discover some amazing truth that will set you free. All right, let's continue. So from her book entitled The Adventist Home, chapter 77, we discover some amazing secrets about Christmas that every Christian ought to know. Now, I'm not going to talk to you about the entire book because I'm not here to do any book review. We are just going to look at some important secrets about Christmas in just one chapter of that book. But if you want to read the entire book, please feel free to WhatsApp me on 0243 The number is on the, on the screen right now. And I'm going to send you a free copy of the book just today. Just send me right now and you receive that. Now let's continue. What are the secrets that this woman exposed about Christmas that we should know? And this secret, these secrets would answer the age old question whether as Christians we should participate in the celebration of Christmas or not. So please take your time and follow. And remember, the fifth point is so important that you may want to stay to the very end to hear that fifth point because it will change your mind. All right, so let's continue. Number one, according to Ellen G. White in the book, The Adventist Home, the first secret that she revealed is that Christmas is a holiday, not a holy day. Now, there are two different, there's a difference between that. There's a difference between a holiday and a holy day. In Ghana, on the 6th of March of every year, it is a holiday, H-O-L-I-D-A-Y, not a holy day, H-O-L-Y-D-A-Y. Now, this Christmas celebration is not a holy day. In other words, it is not a day that has been mandated in the Bible for Christians to participate by all means. The only holy day in the Bible that Christians are required to follow is the Sabbath day, not any other day. But listen to what Ellen White said. She said, Christmas is coming. Is the note that is sounded throughout our world, from east to west, from north to south, with youth, those of mature age, and even to the aged. It is a period of general rejoicing, of great gladness. But what is Christmas that it should demand so much attention? So she asks a very important question because she's saying that, no, on that day, many people are happy, everyone, young, Old, adult, everybody is happy. What is this Christmas that should demand our attention? Listen to what she said. She said, the 25th of December is supposed to be the day of the birth of Jesus Christ. And its observance has become customary and popular. But yet there is no certainty that we are keeping the veritable day of our Savior's birth. History gives us no certain assurance of this. The Bible does not give us the precise time. Had the Lord deemed this knowledge essential to our salvation, he would have spoken through his prophets and the apostles that we might know all about the matter. By the silence of the scripture upon this point, evidences to us, it is hidden from us for the wisest purpose. 
So otherwise as well, people are saying 25th December is the day Christ was born. But the Bible doesn't say that. Historical record actually proves, in fact, as a matter of fact, Bible makes us understand the day Christ was born, shepherds were on the field. And we know in that part of the world where Jesus was born, it snows during December. And shepherds do not go to the field when it's snowing. So it is obvious, there's are many other reasons that Jesus wasn't born on the 25th of December. And Ellen White is right. But let us hear what she says again. She says, in his wisdom, the Lord concealed the place where he buried Moses. God buried him and God resurrected him and took him to heaven. This secrecy was to prevent idolatry. He against whom they rebelled while he was in active service, whom they provoked almost beyond human endurance, was almost worshipped as God after his separation from them by death. For the very same purpose, he has concealed the precise day of Christ's birth, that the day should not receive the honor that should be given to Christ as the Redeemer of the world, one to be received, to be trusted, to be relied on as he who could save to the uttermost all who come to him. The soul's adoration should be given to Jesus as the son of the infinite God. So Ellen White is saying, Moses, when he died, God buried him secret. Nobody knew where he was buried, and God took him to heaven. Now, the same way God has concealed the day Christ was born, so that we would not shift the focus to the day of his birth, but to the man who was born, and that is our Savior. So Ellen White is very clear and straightforward. Christmas is not a day mandated by God in the Bible. God himself has conceived the day Jesus was born. Nobody knows. Jesus wasn't born the 25th of December. And it is a holy day, not a holy day. It is not mandated for everybody. Now, does that mean that we should not celebrate Christmas? Let's continue to look at the second secret that she revealed to us about Christmas. And that secret is that do not ignore the day. Hmm, interesting. But she just said that it is, not, it is a man-made day. Why is she saying we should not ignore the day? Listen to what she said. As the 25th of December is observed to commemorate the birth of Christ, as the children have been instructed by precept and example that this was indeed a day of gladness and rejoicing, you will find it difficult matter to pass over this period without giving it some attention. It can be made to serve a very good purpose. This is very, very important. She's saying that, look, the, ho the whole world have accepted that 25th December is the day Christ was born. And that day, you cannot ignore it. You must rather take advantage of it and use it to serve a very good purpose. And so she goes on to say that the youth should be treated very carefully. They should not be left on Christmas to find their own amusement in vanity and pleasure seeking, in amusement which will be detrimental to their spirituality. Parents can control this matter by turning the mind and the offering of their children to God and his cause and the salvation of souls. So don't leave your young people to go and wander in the world and say, well, we don't celebrate Christmas, so do whatever you want. Whether you allow them or not, because you have no plan, you have no program, they would wander into worldly amusement. So on that day, use it to serve a greater purpose. On that day, have a plan as a family. Have a plan that you're going to be visiting the poor, the, the orphans, those who are need, in, in, in need. Have a plan and let your children and the things that they will do bring glory to God. That is what she's saying. She goes on to say that the desire for amusement, instead of being quenched and arbitrarily ruled down, should be controlled and directed by painstaking effort upon the part of parents. Now, let me pause here and explain. So, you see, on the day of Christmas, whether you like it or not, there is some excitement in you. Whether you are part of those who are in procession with a fa uh, fancy dress, drumming and going to the club or not, there is, you see, the whole atmosphere on Christmas is different. And so she's saying, don't quench that desire for enjoyment on Christmas, but rather, instead of quenching it or ruling it down, you should control it and direct it painstakingly and direct it upon something that is good. And this is the work of parents. She says, their desire to make gifts may be turned into pure and holy channels and made to result in good to our fellow men by supplying the treasury in the great grand work for which Christ came into, into our world to do. Self-denial and self-sacrifice mark his course of action. Let 
It's Mark Hours who professed to love Jesus because in him is centered our hope of eternal life. And so, dear friends, you don't have to kill the joy, let me put it that way, but rather in that moment of joy where people are saying, look, Jesus has been born and so they are drinking and doing all that. For those of us Christians, let's turn, instead of giving gifts to ourselves and enjoying and killing chickens and enjoying on our own, let's turn that joy into bringing glory to God. And when we do that, others would come to know that that Jesus who was born is indeed a God who loves all people. The third secret about Christmas that Ellen G. was shared is that she said, we must show love through the exchange of gifts. But I thought that was pagan. Why do we have to exchange gifts? Listen to what she said. She said that the holiday season is fast approaching with its interchange of gifts. And old and young are intently studying what they can bestow upon their friends as a token of affectionate remembrance. It is pleasant to receive a gift however small, from those we love. It is an assurance that we are not forgotten and seems to bind us to them a little closer. My dear friend, this is very true. You know, when somebody thinks about you, on the day where it is a public holiday, on the day where there's so much exchange of gifts in the world. In fact, it is believed that in some parts of the world, Christmas Day is the time that people who have nobody in their lives feel the most lonely. It is that time in the world, in some countries, not in Ghana though, because in our past Christmas is celebrated outside. But in some places where on the 25th of December, families are always are indoors and celebrating their alone. People who have nobody feel lonely. And so it will be a blessing that we think about such people and give them gifts. Because when you receive a gift, it's a sign that you are loved by somebody. And that is how Christ wants us to treat each other. Let me continue. She continued to say that it is right to bestow upon one another tokens of love and remembrance. If we do not in this forget God, our best friend, we would make our gifts such as will prove a real benefit to the receiver. I will recommend said books as it will be an aid in understanding the word of God, or that would increase our love for its precept. Provide something to be read during these long winter evenings with youth, those of mature age, and even of the aged. So she has actually given us an idea, and I want to recommend to you, maybe as a church, maybe as an individual, on this festive season, Pack some wonderful books, you know, books about the love of God. And then find people around you that you can share with. For some people, they may not need books. Books may not even express the love of God to them because they don't have what it takes. I mean, they don't have money, they don't have what to eat. When you give them books, they may appreciate it. But if you have given them something that would have solved their current need, it would be, you know, excellent for them. So please. It is not a day to argue. It's not a day to determine who to celebrate or not. It's a day to exchange love. So use it as an opportunity. Your landlord, that your friend, that your friend you've been inviting to church program for all this while and is not coming. Take advantage of that. Present a beautiful gift to this friend and they will love you forever. And you invite them again, they will follow you because you thought about them. Don't argue with anybody, but rather exchange gifts with other people. She continued to say, and that is the fourth important secret. She says, take advantage and share relevant books. And so this is like continuation of what she suggested earlier on. She says, there are many who have not books and publications upon present truth. Here is a large field where money can be safely invested. There are large numbers of little ones who should be supplied with reading. The Sunshine series, the Golden Grain series, poems, Sabbath readings, etc. And so look, she made examples. There are many books that we can share. Select some of them and let's share them on this Christmas. She says that let those who wish to make valuable presents to their children, grandchildren, nephews, and nieces procure for them the children's books mentioned above. For young people, the life of Joseph Bates is a treasure. Also, the three volumes of the Spirit of Prophecy. Okay, these are all books of Ellen White. And basically what she's saying is that, look, for us Christians, let's take it as an opportunity to evangelize, to talk to others about Christ, to wrap beautiful book gifts to other people. This is not a day to forget. This is not a day to brush 
aside. It's a day to remember. It's a day the world says that we are celebrating Jesus Christ, your Savior. And you are here saying, no, I don't celebrate my Savior. We all know and believe that even the world knew and believed that Jesus wasn't born on the 25th of December. And the Bible has not mandated us to celebrate or not to celebrate. Just as the Bible has not mandated you to celebrate your birthday or not to celebrate your birthday. These are all human activities. And the fact that it is man-made, if it is not directed to idol worship, then there is nothing wrong with it. If the thing that you are doing is bringing glory to God, there is absolutely nothing wrong with it. And so on the 25th of December, Ellen White is saying, look, simple, be kind to one another. Take it, as, take it as a perfect opportunity and then share wonderful books with other people. It's a gift that will leave a lasting impression in their heart forever. Number five, the fifth secret that she said, she said, do not forget Jesus. Yes, this is important. She says that Jesus is not to be forgotten. Brothers and sisters, while you are devising gifts for one another, I would remind you of your heavenly friend, lest you should be unmindful of his claims. Would he not be pleased if we show that we have not forgotten him? Jesus, the Prince of Life, gave all to bring salvation within our reach. He suffered even unto death that he might give us eternal life. Christmas is all about Jesus Christ. Yes, it's true. The world is celebrating Christmas and they say it's about Jesus. Yet in the activities, nothing shows that it's about Jesus. They are drinking, they are having sex, they are partying, they are eating, and they are basically involved in all sorts of immoral lifestyle. But for us, when we are participating in this festive season, it should be all about Jesus. So don't forget Jesus in your exchange your gift. You may have a party in your home. There's nothing wrong with that. Don't forget Jesus so that your party doesn't become worldly with worldly music and all that. Whatever you do on the 25th of December, never forget Jesus Christ because it is all about him. He is the one who died for us. He sacrificed and left everything so that we could be part of the kingdom of God. So remember Christ in your festive celebration and the Lord would bless you. Let me continue. The sixth secret, and we are almost ending. The sixth secret, she says, Christmas is about God. And it's true, my dear friend, Christmas is about God. Christmas, according to Ellen White, is a time to honor God. By the world, the holidays are spent in frivolity and extravagance, gluttony and display. Thousands of dollars will be the words that be thrown away upon the coming Christmas and the New Year's in needless indulgence. But it is our privilege to depart from the customs and practices of this degenerate age and instead of expending means merely for the gratification of the appetite or for the needless ornament or articles of clothing, we may make the coming holidays an occasion in which to honor and glorify God. So dear friend, let me explain something here. Just as Ellen White said, Christmas it's a neutral day. Let me put it that way, if, even if it's the right way to say it. Christmas is just a simple day. People are saying it's the day of Christ, the day Christ was born. We know technically Christ wasn't born on that day. But see, what you do on that day will determine whether it is pagan or not. The world by its nature is worldly, and so everything they do is worldly. On the day of Christmas, people spend unnecessary amount of money buying new clothes and all that. Look, when we were all young, during Christmas, they give us Christmas clothes. Yes, we bring it out there. We buy it for you and all that. It is not so necessary. She is saying, look, it's a day that we must begin to honor God. It's a day that God's, you know, ways must be honored in our lives and everything that we do. So whatever we do on that day, whether we eat or we drink, we must do so to bring glory to God. She continued to say that Christ should be the supreme object. But as Christmas has been observed, the glory is turned from him to mortal men, whose sinful, defective character made it necessary for him to come into our world. Jesus, the majesty of heaven, the royal king of heaven, laid aside his royalty, left his throne of glory, his high command, and came into our world to bring to fallen man, weakened in moral power and corrupted by sin, aid divine. Parents should keep these things before their children and instruct them line upon line, precept upon precept, in their obligation to God, not their obligation to each other, to honor and glorify one another by gift and offering. So on the day of Christmas, it should be about Christ. It should be about exalting Christ. It should be about um, glorifying Christ in everything I would do because Christmas 
It's all about Jesus. It's all about God. Number seven, and this is the final one, and we are ending. The final secret she revealed, and this is, this is, I know this is going to sound strange in the ears of many people, and that is that there is nothing wrong to decorate your home or church with Christmas colors or even a Christmas tree. Listen to what she said. God would be well pleased if on Christmas, each church would have a Christmas tree on which shall be hung offerings, great and small, for these houses of worship. Hmm, interesting. She continued to say, shall we have a Christmas tree? Will it not be like the world? We answer, you can make it like the world if you have a disposition to do so, or you can make it as unlike the world as possible. There is no particular sin in selecting a fragrant evergreen and placing it in our churches, but the sin lies in the motive which prompt to action and the use which is made of the gift placed upon the tree. The trees may be as tall and its branches as wide as shall best suit the occasion, but let it be both be laden with golden and silver fruit of beneficence, and present this to him as your Christmas gift. Let your donations be sanctified by prayer. So dear friend, if you see a Christmas tree in my church, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I am not bowing to those trees. If you cut the tree and shape it into some idol and bow and pray before it, that is a problem. There's nothing wrong with a tree that I'm hanging gifts to be given to others who are in need. There's nothing wrong with that. It is not necessary. It is not by force. If you do it, you have not done anything wrong. If you don't do it, you have not done anything wrong. So don't force your belief on other people. Because on the day of Christmas, it is not a day to fight. There's no a day to prove who is right and who is wrong. It's no a day to argue. Just like on the 6th of March every year in Ghana, it is a holiday. It is no a day to go to church or do anything. You can't say, I don't celebrate this much because I don't belong to this Ghana and their corrupt politics and stuff like that. It is a day. It's just a day. So whether you celebrate it or not, it is up to you. It's not a sin to celebrate it, neither is there a sin not to celebrate it. But it's a wonderful opportunity to show the love of Christ to everybody because Christ came to die for all. And if the world is saying, look, 25th December is a day to remember Jesus Christ, why do we, the followers of Jesus Christ, stand aside? Why don't we show them the best way to be a Christian? Why don't you show them who, what it means to be a follower of Christ? And most importantly, the love of Christ that we have received. Why don't you take advantage of the 25th of December and even let the world know of Christ? Yes, I know people are going to say, why don't you do that on any other day of the, of, of the year? Well, we are doing that on a, all the days of the year. But guess what? In most cases, we invite the world and they don't come. In most cases, they reject even our calls. They reject our appeals to them. But there comes a time in the year where the world is saying, today is the day for Christ. We are going to do what we have been doing throughout the year on that particular day and even do it the more because it is an opportunity that you cannot afford to miss. My advice before I end, let us not argue. It is not important. We have not been called to argue. We have been called to live Christ-likeness, Christ-like character, Christ-like life, Christ-likeness wins every argument hands down but if you want to use your voice you might as well as go into politics because in christianity god hates argument may the lord bless you and may you make this coming christmas a blessed one that will bring glory to god